What's going on everybody, Kalipas Tech here coming back at you with another video. In this video, I'm going to be giving you some beginner tips and tricks for the Samsung Galaxy A15 5G to help you get more comfortable using it. Now as always, if you end up wanting to learn more about this phone, definitely check out the description where I am linking to several other videos about it, as well as some information about pricing, availability, and some of my favorite smartphone accessories. But with that being said, let's get into it. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how to control which apps can send you notifications. Now. On one hand, notifications can be useful for certain things, but as you get more and more apps, of course, you're also gonna get more and more notifications because it seems like all these apps wanna send you notifications for one reason or another, and let's face it, not all of them are useful. So I'm gonna show you how to control your notifications so you can really maximize your experience with this phone. So first things first, we're gonna go to settings and you can find the settings icon in the app drawer by swiping up and going through all this stuff, but Really the easier way to do it is by swiping down from the top, so like this. The settings icon is right here, so tap on this. Then from this menu, go to notifications, so right here. And then from here, go to app notifications. So this is going to show you all the apps on your phone, and as you can see there are quite a few that do have notifications on, but if you want to turn them off, simply toggle it off like this. And that's pretty much it. And if you want to narrow it down to things that have been recently sending you notifications, what you can also do is hit this drop down right here, go to most recent or most frequent, and this is going to help filter things out for you. Now we're going to take a quick look at the sound menu. Now you can get to this from the settings menu, but the easier way to do it is by pressing either volume keys, so volume down. From here, hit these dots. Then from here, hit the settings icon right here. And this right here is the volume section of the sound menu. We will come back to this later, but for now, to get to the main sound menu, hit this arrow right here, and this is it. So up top here, we got several different modes. As you can see right now, I am in mute, but you can choose between mute, vibrate, sound. Pretty typical of really any Android phone. You can also change your ringtone, so if we go here, there are lots of presets here. And if you want to add your own, hit the plus right here, and you can choose from your sounds. Under this we got the notification sound, so pretty similar, but keep in mind unfortunately with the notification sound you can't add a custom, but aside from that the process is basically the same. Under this we got system sound, so you can change the system volume and turn several other sounds on and off. Under system sound we got volume, so we were just here. As you can see, here you can change the ringtone volume, media volume, notifications, and system volume. And like it says here, by default the volume buttons will control the media sound, so definitely keep this in mind. Then we got vibration, so both call vibration and notification vibration, so you can customize the patterns and strength of those. System vibration, so if we go here, same kind of thing, basically like system sounds, but there are certain times when it will vibrate and you can turn these on and off. Vibration intensity, sound quality and effects, and separate app sounds. Now these bottom two I really personally don't use a whole lot, but they're basically some additional options that can control the quality of your sound. Now since the overall sound quality of the phone speaker is really not that great to begin with. I personally don't ever mess with these, but the more notable one here is separate app sound, so if you have a certain app you want to have a little bit louder or maybe a bit quieter, or just muted, depending on the app you can probably control it in the app too, but you can also control it here. Now I'm going to show you a quick and easy way to customize your home screen. So to do this, simply put your finger on any blank spot on the home screen and hold it for just a second, so like this and this is going to show up. From here, you can change your wallpaper, customize your theme, add and remove widgets, and access some additional home screen settings. So I'm going to do it one more time in case you missed it. To get to this menu, again press and hold your finger on a blank spot on your home screen. So like this. And there we go. Now that brings me to the next thing I'm going to show you, and that's how you can hide an app. So this is really useful for those apps that are maybe not really that useful to you. Maybe it's something like the Galaxy Store for example. Of course, lots of people do use it, but if you never do, you might not want it there and unfortunately you can't delete it so you're pretty much stuck with it. But if you want to just get it out of the way, you can actually hide it. To do this, go back to that same menu, so again, press and hold your finger on a blank spot on the home screen, so like this. Then from here, go to settings. From here, go to where it says hide apps, so right here. This is going to show you pretty much every app on your phone, so. Let's find the Galaxy Store, so right here, select this, hit done, and now back on the home screen, as you can see, the Galaxy Store is no longer there, and if we go to the app drawer, so for this, swipe up, 
This is the app drawer right here. And the Galaxy Store is not here either. And then if you want to unhide it, go back to the same menu once more. So again, press and hold your finger right here. Or really anywhere that's blank. Again, go to settings. Hide apps. And when you have an app hidden, it's going to be up here at the top. So to unhide it, tap on the icon. Hit done. And now if we go back. If it was on the home screen when you hit it, it's not going to be back there. But if we swipe up. Again, this is the app drawer that basically shows you all your apps. And the Galaxy Store is going to be in here. So as you can see right here, and we can just press and hold and put it back. So there we go. Now I'm going to show you how to change your screen lock. To do this, go to settings. Then from here, go to lock screen. So right here. From here, go to screen lock type. Enter your current pin, which you should have gotten when you turned on your phone for the first time. And then from here, you can choose between pin, password, pattern, swipe, or none. Keep in mind, swipe and none are basically no security at all. Pattern is a little security, but not a whole lot. Pin is the standard, and then if you want really high security, you can also use a password. In addition to this, if you have your face and fingerprints set up, you can turn them on and off from here. But if you haven't set them up yet, let me show you how to do it. So right now we're going to go back to the main settings menu. So yeah, the main settings menu right here. Then from here, go to security and privacy. So right here. From here, go to biometrics. So right here. And then from here, you can set up your face unlock and your fingerprint scanner. Now I'm going to show you how to change your system navigation. So by default, this phone has the typical three buttons at the bottom. Pretty normal for any budget Android phone, but we can change this. To do this, go to settings. Then from here, go to display. Right here. From this menu, go to navigation bar. So right here. And in this menu, we got a couple different options. First of all, you can swap these buttons around. So this is the default layout, but you can also have the back button on the left and the recent apps button on the right. So if we go like this, not really a huge difference, but some people might prefer it. But in addition to this, you can also use what's called gesture navigation. To do this, go to swipe gestures. And now, as you can see, instead of buttons at the bottom, we got this one line here, so a bit more minimalistic. And in case you've never used this before, let me show you how it works. So to go home, swipe up from the bottom, so like this. There we go. To go to your recent apps, drag your finger partially up and hold it for a second, so it doesn't really have to be that far, just like this. And there we go. And then to go back, swipe from either side, and it doesn't really matter which side. You can go like this, or like this. Again, it does pretty much the same thing. But yeah, that's gesture navigation. Now, to be perfectly honest, on this phone in particular, I'm not really the biggest fan of how it works and looks on this interface. If it were something like the Samsung Galaxy S23 FE or my iPhone, then that's a completely different story. But with the A15 5G, I will say it does feel like it lags just a little bit too much. So I personally prefer the buttons, but if you've never tried it before, I do recommend just at least giving it a try because who knows, it might be different for you. Now I'm gonna show you how to change your screen timeout time. To do this, go to settings. Then from here, go to display. So right here. From this menu, go to screen timeout. Right here. And as you can see, you can choose between 15 seconds and 10 minutes. So we do have a few options here, but also keep in mind, if you're consuming a lot of content, especially something like reading, chances are 10 minutes is probably not going to be enough. So in that case, I do recommend using the keep screen on while viewing feature. In my experience, even on lower end phones like this, it does work pretty well. And basically what it does is using the front facing camera, it detects your face. And as long as you're looking at the screen, it is going to stay on. So you don't have to worry about the screen timeout time. But then when you put the phone down, it just goes back like normal. So yeah, definitely a cool feature here. Now I'm going to show you how to take a screenshot with the Samsung Galaxy A15 5G. So definitely more of a basic feature. But essentially to take a screenshot, what you're going to want to do is press the power key and the volume down key at the same time. And keep in mind you don't have to hold these buttons, just press them real quick. So like this. And that's pretty much it. You can edit, share, whatever you want to do. And when you're done, it's going to save right to your photos. In addition to this, there is another way to do it, albeit not really as straightforward, but essentially, if you put your palm on the outside of your phone like this and swipe over, so like this, this is also going to take a screenshot. But 
Again, keep in mind it's not the most straightforward, so there is a bit more opportunity to make a mistake. But in general, although it's kind of a small feature, it's always nice to have an extra shortcut. Now I'm going to show you a feature called Adaptive Brightness. As the name implies, basically this feature is just going to adjust the brightness of your display based on your environment, and this is really good for the battery, so if you're in a super bright, sunny area for example, the display is going to brighten up and make it easier to see. But on the other hand, if you're in like a dark room, it's going to dim it because, of course, in the dark, it won't need to be as bright. So this is a really easy feature to get to. All you have to do is go to Settings, then from here, go to Display, right here. And under the brightness section, adaptive brightness is right here. Toggle it on. And as you can see, it adjusted right away. And then finally, the last thing I want to show you is in this same menu, and that's dark mode. So dark mode is really cool. A lot of people like to use it for one reason or another. So essentially, right up here, dark mode is here. So just tap on dark. And there we go, we are now in dark mode. In addition to this, you can also customize it. So if we go to dark mode settings, here you can set a schedule for it. So if you want it to be dark, maybe at night, and then light during the day, that is what I personally do. So if you go like this, you can have it turned on from sunset to sunrise, or a custom schedule. Also, I do want to point out, dark mode is also going to be in the quick menu. And in case you don't know what that is, to get to the quick menu, swipe down twice from the top. So one, two, and that's this menu right here. So dark mode is going to be here by default on the second page, I think, or actually no. It's right down here under brightness. So if you tap on the button, that's going to turn it on. But this concludes my beginner's guide to the Samsung Galaxy A15 5G. Again, if you want to learn more about this phone, definitely check out the description, where I am linking to several other videos about it, as well as some information about pricing, availability, and some of my favorite smartphone accessories. But that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it and found it useful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to follow Kalipas Tech on Twitter and Instagram. And as always, I will see you in the next video.